Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blog around the, o- around the OAA, the host of Last Three Brain Cells and the host of Queen Taramina's on Orient Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Orient Neighborhood Television. This week we got um, two... Two football coaches calling in this week. We're going to start off with the coach of the Birmingham Grove Falcons, Coach Brendan Flaherty. Coach, thank you for joining us this week. Sammy, thanks for having me, and 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 thanks for all you do for high school sports, in particular football, and in particular the OAA. I I really appreciate your work, and you know it's it's an honor for you to have me on, man. Thank you so much. Very much appreciated. Um, when you look at your team, let's recap last season. Of course, um, you had a pretty young team. Um, you know, had a nice year. I mean, like you had a really nice year. Um, knocked off Harper Woods. Um, played Southfield tough, but you ran into Seaholm. Um, and they beat you guys twice. Once in the regular season, once in the playoffs. So recap last season for me. Yeah, I think we had a, a really good regular season. We did some good things. I thought we progressed real well, and. Um, you know, towards the end of the year, it's, it's getting getting past our crosstown arrival is difficult. I mean, it doesn't – the old adage that the the, the records don't mean anything is true. Um, in my 20-plus years here, it's it's always tough to beat them. And, you know, playing them twice, you know, two two weeks in a row is tough. So I, I don't think we uh, – I just think we had a couple bad weeks um, and, and faults on us as coaches and – you know, the other players played their tails off and we could have done some better things as coaches. But, you know, I think if we would have got past them, I think we could have we could have made a run there. So but that's that's always our goal to get past them. Talk about, you know, yeah, having a play see home, um, you know, and then, you know, in the regular final game of the regular season. And then your thought process when you had when you just played see home and then you have to play them again. I mean, what was your thought process thinking? I mean, like. You had to be thinking, like, maybe possibly going to Livonia, probably playing Warren. I mean, like, but what was your thought process having to play Seaham in the first round of the playoffs? Well, actually, it was, it was, um, we, we were, we felt pretty good about it because, you know, it's a physical week playing them just because of their offense and the things they do. So actually playing them twice in a row, I think, was advantageous to us because then you're, you know, it's, it's a muscle memory and you're seeing the reps the same week in a row and doing it. Um, a little bit of a transition cause you get all the pros pros and trying to say, what are you doing or who are you playing and stuff? So we weren't really prepping that whole, you know, Sunday afternoon, uh, we're getting ready for somebody else. Uh, but it, 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 you know, we wanted to play them, you know, you can't, can't beat them if you don't play them. So we, we were actually looking forward to playing them again. And when you look at when you look at the team, we're gonna look at your team here. Um, obviously the quarterback situation. I mean, obviously, talk about you got a new quarterback coming in. Um, talk about what um he brings to you guys. Well, Ryan Counts will be a senior for us, and he is, you know, played in the Birmingham Patriots and been our feeder program and been with us, you know, for years, for eight plus years. And he is a tremendous athlete and extremely gifted as far as decision-making. And, you know, we feel really, really good about him. And young guy behind him is uh, Lavelle Shannon. He'll be pushing Ryan. Uh, he's done, done some great stuff this summer. So we feel really good about the position. But Ryan Counts is, you know, he's steady at it, man. He is solid as a rock. And it's going to be hard to lose in a quarterback like him, Caden Hardy. I mean, like, four-year starter. Um you know, I mean, like, I mean, like, um, how is that, how is that going to progress with you guys? I mean, obviously losing a player like Hayden, you know, that's a big loss for you guys. Yeah, it's a huge, it's a huge loss. Um, but it's not, you know, that's the, I mean, that's the beauty of, you know, high school football, especially in a public school, you know, it's like, you got to adapt and adjust. And, uh, Ryan brings some stuff to the table that Caden, you know, didn't, um, and, and vice versa. But it's like, you know, we'll, uh, other guys will learn to pick it up and be able to do some different things with Ryan that we couldn't do with Caden. And, you know, like I said, we feel good about it, but it's like one of those ones that's, you know, control what you can control and we can't control that Caden is moving on to college football. Um, also, let's look at your running game. I mean, uh, you got two very good running backs, um, Mario and Amaso Noah. Um, talk about 
your two running backs and what do they bring to you guys? I, I mean, obviously it's like a, you know, people always say it's a thunder and a lightning type of thing, but you know, we like to think it's a thunder and a thunder thing. Both guys are, are dynamic, um, strong, you know, fast runners, um, and they push each other, but at the same time, it's, it's a, it's a good teammate, you know, competitive, um, thing between them. Uh, you know, it's up to us as coaches, try to figure different ways to get them both on the field at the same time and getting them touches and, you know, figuring out ways that they can uh, have success and help the team at the same time. And when you look at, of course, um, both of them player wise, I mean, Mario, you know, that power running back and then Noah, obviously you, you remind me a lot of his father, Barry, when he played with the lions and at Oklahoma state, um, It'll be very interesting to see how you how how they how you handle this um this running running game situation. You know, is it by committee or is it like hot hand available? I mean, what's your thought process? Both those things are true. You know, you always want to say like if something's going, you, you know, like for us, it's always that thing. It's like a, you know, my saying is like, and I'm a simpleton. It's like, you know, if the opposing team can't stop it, let's not stop it for them by not doing it. So. If some stuff gets hot, we find some some ways that we can exploit those guys' talents. Then we're obviously going to ride that. But at the same time, I think it's it's critical for us to make sure it's balanced um, and 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 creating, like I say, different ways that those guys can help us. And uh, it's almost like a you, you know like a basketball coach where like you got a couple set plays. Like okay, this is this is his thing and this is his thing. And I think just being able to do that. Uh, to say that, you know, we think we can have success with this, with Noah, um, you know, we'll do it. And the same thing, we do these things with Mario. We'll we'll put those out there and almost draw the play up there like a basketball coach. And then, of course, talk your receivers. Obviously, when you look at your wide receiving core, um, for, um, you know, you look at your receiving core, you got some proven athletes over there at the uh, at wide receiver. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Chris Little's, you, you know, has, has been a three-year, you know, starter for us. And Nick Hardy's been a four-year varsity player for us and a three-year starter. So those guys, you know, we bring some experience to the table. Um, and I think those guys have pushed each other and, and gotten better. Um, you know, so we're really excited about them. I think the guy that gets lost in the shuffle quite a bit is, you know, a guy of uh, Noah Woods. He'll be, you know, second year, you know, starting tight end. And he played varsity as a sophomore, did some great things for us. So, he is a uh, like he's a force to be reckoned with too. I mean, he's like he's a we think he's a dude. He's he's we think he's one of the you know the better tight ends uh, around for sure in the league and maybe in the state. So we're excited about Noah Woods contributing as well. And then when you look at your line, I mean, uh, and then before we talk defense, um, let's look at your line. Obviously, the attention's been Avery Guy, but um, uh, any other impact lineman that can make some noise this year besides Guy? Yeah, we we feel real good. Um, you know, Matias Andreos Andreo is is coming back. He was started for us as a sophomore. He's a big guy. I mean, he's you know darn near as big as Avery, which he, if you can believe it. And his reach is you know similar. So he's a guy we're real excited about. Um, he's doing some great things. Tyson Wright is a guy uh, you know we're looking forward to, and um, you know Leland Swanson's you know coming around too. You know, so we we feel really good about the line where it's going. And then let's talk your defense. I mean, like, obviously in the defensive line, um, a lot of those linemen you have. Um, talk about any impact defensive linemen that can make some noise. Uh, well, I, th- I think, you know, our, our big our big guy coming back, Josh Hammond, so he'll just be a junior for us. But he, he led our team in force fumbles last year, and he was in the top five as far as tackles. Um, he you know, He's a great football player. You know, his dad played up at Michigan State uh, for, for Coach Perlis, and, and he's just – we're expecting big things from him. You know, he'll we'll move him around quite a bit. He played the end. He might play a little bit interior stuff for us. But he is – like, he's a guy that when his motor gets going, like he, like, he makes plays. So, you know, Josh will be our leader up front. And then let's look at your linebackers. Um, obviously, back in your defense, the linebackers, defensive secondary – um, when you look at, uh, obviously you do have, um, in your, in, let's talk about your linebackers. I mean, like your linebackers, you know, expect to be very good again this year. Um, any impact players there, uh, at linebacking core that can make some noise that away nation yeah, yeah. know about? 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think, you know, Car- Carter Lackey will be a junior for us. He's coming back. He started on both sides of the ball because a couple injuries. We had to move him over to uh, offense as a fullback, but he is a linebacker. Like he's a, like he's a true inside linebacker, wide, short ridge, um, who battled some injuries last year. He's back. So those two guys will start for us inside. And the outside, Aiden Lee Young will be a three year starter for us. And Paul Hubbard, who is, one of our best athletes. He's another guy that we're going to get the ball to on offense, but he is an absolute dog on defense and basketball player. Um, and he's just, he's extremely, extremely gifted. So those guys kind of head out our linebacking court, but we got a group of like, there's three senior guys, Spencer, George, Wes Smith and Miller, man, those guys, you, you know, we've bidding for time and playing and pushing those guys I mentioned, but also they'll be on every single kick team, and and their presence will be known. Those guys are, you know, work their tails off, and they're part of this, you know, solid senior group we got. And then let's look at your defensive secondary. Obviously, you got you got Chris Little there. Um, he also plays wide receiver, of course. I remember he's. I mean, he's had three interceptions in his career. Um, talk about the um your defensive secondary a little bit. Yeah, well, I think he's had more than three. I mean, he's had a ton. I mean, he's, I don't know where he's at. I think he's somewhere around 17 for a career. Mm-hmm. So when that ball goes up, Chris is going to get it. So obviously he's the guy that, that we, people talk a lot about. Jalen Brooks is worked his butt off all season. Um, you know, got injured in the sea home game and the playoff game. And he's pretty motivated to come back and, and, you know, get after it, uh, against, against those guys up the road and everybody else at our schedule, but he's really worked his butt off to get there. Riley Armsbarger is a, is a, uh, uh, Armsbarger is a, a junior force that is going to be starting and playing a bunch in some of our nickel stuff and some of our three down stuff. But the, really the guy who stirs a drink and gets us lined up is Teddy Abbott. So Teddy will be a senior force, a three-year starter, um, you know, the poor guy played injured with a bum shoulder, you know, for half the season last year and just, you know, wouldn't come out. Um, you had successful surgery in the off season. So we're looking forward to him coming back, but you know, Teddy, Teddy gets his line up and he, and he does it. So we're, we're pumped up about our group. And then your um, kicking game. Um, how's your special teams looking? Uh, well, seeing how I'm the special teams coordinator, you know, we, we're going to spend a, a good amount of time on our kick teams Gage Waters will be our kicker, um, and he's solid. He'll be a junior for us. He's he is, you know, he is as, as steady as it is they come. Um, I think he's really improved on his kickoffs. Um, so we're excited for him. You know, Mario was, has been our punter the past two years, so Mario will punt for us again. And uh, yeah, we like what we're doing. Now let's look at your schedule. I mean, like, it is a tough one. I mean, especially the first two weeks of the year. You guys got to go to UD Jesuit to play the Cubs and then West Bloomfield. Um, and then that's and then you got to play Ferndale um, week eight and then um, week nine, Seaholm. So we'll, we'll talk every we'll talk every team like um, real, real simply. I mean, like, like um, just make it easy. Um, so we'll start off with your week one matchup against UD Jesuit. How in the heck did this matchup come, come about? You know, we just, you know, we put it out there. We were trying to, you know, find a game. And I just, you know, I put it on the coach's website. And I'm like, all right, you know, whoever calls us, we'll, we'll set it up. Um, and Coach Lewis, the, the former coach there, you know, called, um, you know, he's, he's a great guy, tremendous coach. I knew his father. Um, his father used to actually coach a little basketball here. So, you know, we were looking forward to a good tilt. Um, and then, Coach Lewis left, and, and then, um, you know, Kevin Glenn, Coach Glenn, I guess, took over. So I don't know him very well. I don't really know him at all. But I know he's a tremendous offensive mind. Um, so we kind of put that together. We just kind of we put it together trying to find an opener. And uh, that's the one that popped out. So we're looking forward to that. And, you know, week two is West Bloomfield. And, you know, we 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 enjoy playing – you know, great competition. So, I mean, the only way you can get a big win is if you play somebody big. So we're looking forward to West Bloomfield coming over here again. And last year, that game, that was, that was a little rough for you guys. I mean, like I watched that game and I was going like, what the heck happened to you guys there in that one? I was shocked though to see West Bloomfield the way they did. They handled you guys in that, game, that night last year in Beverly Hills. 
yeah, it just it wasn't a good night for us. Um, we just, you know, like you know, it's a, it's a partnership between playing and coaching, and I think we could have done a better job putting our guys in better spots. And you know, we had a couple, you know, costly turnovers, and um, it, you know, Sammy better than anybody. Like you, you, you just can't you can't have um, a ton of mistakes against you know West Bloomfield. You know, they're just too, you know, so we just, it was just, like I said, a partnership of, you know, just, you know, some bad plays by the players, but definitely some, some bad coaching on us too. So, you know, West Bloomfield exploited us and, you know, that's what happens when you play somebody great. If you do dumb stuff, they're going to take advantage of you. And then you look at your other, I'm not conferences, um, Ferndale on week eight, you know, that's an interesting matchup between, um, you know, I think Ferndale's going to be better this year um, between you guys and Ferndale. I mean, Ferndale really has got some experience coming back. So what's your early thoughts about playing the Eagles? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think Coach Rowe is a great coach. Now, I got to double check, Sammy, to be honest with you, because I thought we were playing Royal Oak. Oh, I got to take a look. Maybe, my bad. I apologize. I think maybe, you're right. You're right. You're right. Maybe we're playing Ferndale. I mean, but I mean, this is really it's like, you know, really after, like, I'm not sure who we play after week two. I, I'm pretty sure we're playing Stony Creek. I think mm-hmm. it's at Stony, but I mean, I just, I really kind of just honing in on those two mm-hmm. and, and I'm not, I'm not making that up. I'm being honest. I, I, I just kind of hone in on those, those couple. Mm-hmm. Um, take it two weeks at a time. Yeah. Well, I try to take it one week at a time, but I just know those first two. Um, so we got them and I, uh, I thought we were playing Royal Oak and I, the only I reason it I is Royal Oak. Is, I, I apologize. Okay. For that. I no, apologize. That's good. <laughs> I'm excited because we, I think we're playing over there and um, myself and my secondary coach, John Curran, we put, you know, we're from Royal Oak. I'm from Royal Oak. I went to Shrine, but we used to play our home games over there. And um, so, you know, we're looking forward to going over to Royal Oak and playing over there and, 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 you know, getting after those guys. So it's a fun place to play. And then, of course, we got to talk the rival with Seaholm, and then we'll get into league play. We'll talk about your division. Um, talk about playing Seaholm. I mean, like, I know, you know, the rival. I know the history. Talk about that rivalry in your eyes, you know what I mean? Like, playing against um, Seaholm, playing against the Maples. Talk about that rivalry. I think it's it's a, you know, we are, like, is, is maybe goofy as it sounds, we're really fortunate to have a great crosstown rival. Um, there's nobody I respect more in the state than Coach DeWald and what he does. And, you know, it's just it's just part of that thing. And it's, you know, it's a city rivalry. But we always, I always tell the senior guys, like, you're going to see those guys the rest of your life. And, and everybody, and every, you know, and... Not, not everybody else isn't going to know, but you're going to know and their seniors are going to know. And you got to, unfortunately, you got to live with that for our seniors last year, which was just a tremendous group of guys, but they got to live with that. So our guys, I mean, the pressure is really, you know, that's it. That's, that's how it is. That's how we look at it. Like you get, you're going to see those guys the rest of your life. You're going to see them at, you know, Dick O'Dow's on, on Thanksgiving weekend or, somewhere up at state or Michigan, or you'll see them at a frat party. And it's like, and you know, in your heart, if you, you know, you know, you, you know, you know who won and who lost. And, you know, that's, yeah, that, like, that's what we're playing for. We're playing for that, that feeling, you know, when you see those other guys, the rest of your life in our community, if that makes sense. And that, and and it makes plenty of sense there. I mean, like playing against your arch rival, I mean, like, you know, you're going to remember, you know, you, they pl- you played with the same kit. You played with the same players in middle school. You know, they go to different schools, you know, Groves or Seaholm. You know, I mean, like, you know, so that's, you know, I know that rivalry really, really well. And it's one of the um, top rivalries in the entire league in the entire state. I mean, like, and it was, to me, in my opinion, I think it was unfortunate you guys played each other last year in the playoffs and in the first round. I kind of thought both teams would have been a district final matchup you know what I mean? Would have been a great matchup. You know what I mean? If it wasn't the later rounds, that was, that's my opinion. Yeah. I, I, I don't disagree. Um, yeah, it's, it's true. It's, but it's, like I said, it's just, uh, it's, um, I think we're fortunate. I mean, that, that we've, we've got a great, we got a great, great rival. I mean, coach Dwall does a 
a fantastic job. I mean, he, he does a great job with that and he gets the most out of his kids. And obviously we try to get the most out of ours. So it's, you know, um, I think it's made each other's programs better. You know, when you got somebody that pushes you and, and that old adage, you know, iron strengthens iron. So we're actually pretty fortunate that we have a great rival. And then let's go to your, um, let's go to um, your league. Obviously the white division, um, you know, a lot of these teams really well. Um, get your thought process on um, each of these teams in the division. Um, I'm going to start off with um, with the D4 state champion, Harper Woods Pioneers. You went to Harper Woods last year and won over there. That was not an easy, that's not an easy place to play at either. So what's your thought process when you think about with Harper Woods? Yeah, they're great. I mean, Coach Odin does a, he just does a, he does a great job. I really like him, uh, respect him. Um, I mean, our whole league is, 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 you know, it's got some pretty solid coaches, but coach Oden does it. And, uh, you know, you're right. It is a tough place to play over there, but I think that got us, uh, in position to have success. I think we really kind of took off after that victory over there, but it is a tough place to play. Um, but that, but that seasons you, that stuff season, you know, that, I know coach Oden mentioned this, like playing in the OA white, like that season them and, because they played in that division and they moved over to the OA that he feels that really helped propel them um, to the next level on the state level. So, you know, we love, love, like I said, we love great competition and they're coming to our place, which is great, but we're looking forward to playing them again. And let's talk about now, let's talk about A&T, the other, um, the, the, v, the D1 state champion. So what's your thought? I mean, last year you had a really tough loss. a and going through some changes, obviously. So talk about, What's your thought process when you talk about a and um, Well, I thought we – and they're the state champs, so it was like they're pretty good. Um, but like I, like I said before, I think when you when you play great teams, it, it, it brings the best out in you. You know, you can't – you know, um, those are the fun times, you know, playing, playing some really, really good teams. And I know Southfield lost a lot, but, you know, they got just – dudes walking around that building so i know they're going to be pretty good and we are definitely looking forward to playing them okay what about um rochester i mean obviously you know coach eric vernon very well um talk about your um thoughts about having to play rochester and it's going to be on the road for you guys over there this year yeah Vern does a great job like he like he does a fabulous job with his guys i mean it's like i said it's it's a there's some pretty good coaches in the league and, and Vern's is right up there with all of them. I think like he does an excellent job getting the very most out of his guys. He played, you know, and this is kind of, he's, you know, I've been in his spot before where he's, you know, last, two years ago, they were pretty doggone good because they were riding some senior guys and they got the best of us. And last year he was playing some younger guys um, that are coming back. So it's, it's going to be a battle, you know, and like I said, he does a great job and it's, Another place that's a difficult place to play, especially on a Friday night out there. Um, they got great crowds, so it's it's going to be an adventure out there. But again, it's like, you know, that's the, you know, I, I think that brings the most out of us, brings the best out of us. So looking forward to playing them, uh, but but definitely respect them and know they're going to be pretty good. And then Stony Creek, I mean, like they come down from the red. Um, obviously got a new coach over there. Um, what's your thought process about playing Stony Creek? Yeah, I mean it's that's another, you know, it's almost like it's a, I almost feel like sometimes it's like a like a, we gotta go there the day before because it takes forever to get out there, um, you know, especially with the traffic and stuff. So it's a difficult place to play. Um, I know they got a new coach there, so I know Coach Merlo moved on. So you know, looking forward to playing them and and going on their own, getting after them. The, the last time we played there, we were. Um, you know, we, we got beat. That Stony Creek was pretty good that year. I forget what year it was, but they're, they beat us. And, um, and, and, and the lighting fireworks over our head, you know, after the loss, I'm like, Oh, this is, this is what you get. You know, the, you know, the, the victory goes to spoils and, you know, as those, those sparklers are falling down on us, you know, we just, we took our lumps. They got out of there, but we are definitely looking forward to going back out there. And that's going to be a very interesting game. I mean, like, so when you thought process of the division of the white this year, um, it looks like it's going to be a very tough division in your eyes. You know, when you look at it. 
Well, I mean, if you if you look, at, I mean, you just look you look at the history. Yeah, you know, it's like, you know, I think all the team, I think the OAs, you know, it's from top to bottom. Um, you know, uh, you know, the, you look at the, you know, the, um, you know, the Grand Rapids League, the OK League. Yep, the I mean, that's can't. solid top. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing, that's solid, you know. But, I mean, the OA is, is up there with everybody, you know. I think it's the best league, you know. I mean, obviously, I'm partial, and I don't want to be, oh, I'm not thinking about the Catholic League or, you know, the OK League, and everybody, everybody's getting, you know, so oh, we're the best league, we're the best league, and something like that. But, you know, I think, I think the thing about the OA white, and you look at the teams in there and the coaches that it's, like in the red, you know, and, and I don't want, I don't want to not misleading the blue, but it's like it's it's tough, man. It's tough, man. It's it's a it's a it's a tough battle, you know, a week in and week out. Um, and then let's talk about how your program strength is doing. Of course, you look at um your JV, your freshman, and then the middle school levels. Talk about how those have been, how those have been going for you guys. Yeah, we, you know, we just, this is some of the things with a public school. It's like, um, you know, last year our, you know, numbers were a little bit down on the freshman level. So we, you know, we had to move around. We didn't play a complete schedule. I think we put together four games for them and they played in some JV games. So um, that was a little bit of a bump for us next year, but we're super excited about our freshman class this year. We got a great group of guys coming in a mixed group of guys, some guys that played middle school, some guys that played in our, in our youth program, the Birmingham Patriots. So, but those guys have been, you know, we just got done with a workout and they're, it's a solid group and a talented group. So we're looking forward to our freshman guys, that sophomore group, those JV group of guys will do a fantastic job. Coach Mason, Dave Mason is my, my JV coach and he'll put stuff together. He's brilliant. Um, so we'll mix and match. Uh, with the sophomore guys, like I said, it was a small group last year, a couple of junior guys who'll come down and play in some games and maybe one freshman guy might move up to the JV. So they're, 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 uh, we're rebuilding on that JV level. The freshman level will be solid. Uh, so we're excited. Middle schools are, are great. Like I said, it's a good mix between our middle school uh, team over, over Berkshire, but the Birmingham Patriots, you know, um, is, is, solely a feeder school we we preach it as a feeder school for us and for sea home so we put a lot of blood sweat and tears in our in our feeder program with the patriots and then of course you know like obviously you know there's always that threat down the road you know with Birmingham brother rice i mean like right next to you so you know i know i i think you've played have you we played Birmingham brother rice in the past so you know talk about you know what i mean that possibility you know what i mean like that fear of losing kids to them well, I, it's, it's a couple of questions there. A couple of things. I'm gonna answer first one. is like we love playing Rice. You can't mm-hmm. beat them if you don't play them. So it's like, you know, we've beat them two out of the last three times we've played them. And if I would have made some better decisions, probably would have been a three for three. So we're very much looking forward to playing them. Um, you know, I, I know, um, <laughs> you know, I know they're going to be much much improved with the new coaching staff going over there. So um, and they're in Division Two. So. You know, right now we're already kind of saying if we're, you know, if we're fortunate enough to get in the playoffs, it'll be you know, us, see home and Rice and whoever I else. I think they move Rice over is here. D three. So, I don't think they're D two. No, they're D two. We know. We okay. looked it up. So <laughs> we know that stuff. So I think it's that. And you know, I tell everybody in our community, it's like you know, you go kick the tires. I mean, you go, you know, like like visit. You know, people like you know, usually our biggest things. Well, I go to Groves or Seal. I'm like, well. Spend it, you know, go go shadow for a day there, go check it out and and see what it's like. And then I tell the parents, I said, you want to see what a school is like? You go there five o'clock on a weekday night in the winter, and walk right down our pool hallway or whoever's pool hallway, and you see. Then you get a real, you know, you're not gonna get the open house and here's a free pencil mm-hmm. or whatever. You check it out. So we do that, but I mean, it's you know between Groves and Sea Home, I mean, it's not a uh, you know, I want, you know, it's not a, like a fear, like they're going there. I and mean, there's some kids that are, you, you know, they want a Catholic faith-based um, education. So like, we can't provide that here. You right. know, what we provide is a diverse um, atmosphere and an extremely accelerated academic course. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, frankly, we've got the best or some of the best facilities in the state of Michigan between here and Seaholm. So, you know, go check them out. Go ch- go kick the tires, you know. So mm-hmm. um, that's that's what we say, you know, about the, the private schools in our neighborhood. Talk about also what you do. I mean, you coach the um, Special Olympics team at, um, at Groves. Um, talk about how important that is. I mean, like for you and then the also the community about coaching the Special Olympics team over there. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a twofold thing, you know. For me, what it gives me an opportunity to get some of the football guys involved in Special Olympics, and they truly get an idea of like how blessed they are with the gifts they have. So I think it's a good empathy builder within our program, but also gives them a, a chance to an opportunity where they're thrust into a leadership responsibility. So it, kind of that helps a little bit, you know. But for me, it's it's like you know the idea of sports sports can improve a young person's life and put them on a trajectory of success where it's like, well, they can, you know, they, the, the sports, you know, builds the human being, you know, the, the sports is, is, is the engine that drives the car, but like eventually that person they play, whether it's varsity football on a Friday night or it's a, you know, special Olympics game at four 30 on a Wednesday. I mean, it's important. It's important to that individual. I think it's most important too, for our community that we, we, you know, and that's, I think, a difference between us and a private school. I mean, you're going to get Special Olympics games. We're going to, you know, uh, special needs and the mainstream, they're involved in our classroom and our building, and it's and it's a community atmosphere. So um, that part of it's great. For me, it gives me an opportunity um, to try to give back to our community and try to do some good things, but gives me a chance to make relationships with people that aren't just football guys. And before I let you go, um, Coach, um, what is your expectations this year for Groves? I play four field. Mm-hmm. And when you look at a course and, and and hoist a trophy at four field, you know we're not we're not going to go down there and you know for nothing. So I mean, those are our expectations. And when you look at a course, the um the history, you've been really really close. I mean, a couple times you've been in the Division Two State Semifinals. So you know, I mean, like hoping. This is the year you guys can get there, you know, but you're still going to have to deal with Warren D. LaSalle if you do get there. I mean, like, talk about, you know what I mean, like, you know, getting, having those deep playoff runs, how the kids feel, you know, having those runs. Yeah, I think it's, you know, I think, I think it's a combination of things. I think, you know, one thing is like, you know, you, you, you talk about that, you talk about playing Thanksgiving weekend, you kind of put it out there, but I think if you get, you know, too far ahead of that, then that's when you start, you know, stumbling and making mistakes, you know, it's like, you know, how do you, how do you get out of a dark force, like one step at a time. So just like process oriented, like I'm more worried about us getting bigger and stronger here and finish up summer, you know, so it's, I think it's like, like what I've learned, um, you know, over the 24 years here is like, you know, it's just, you know, we can just worry about today. Let's just make today great win today. So doing those things, and then trying to speculate who we're going to play and when we're going to play that whole thing is like a crap shoot and what side of the state and, you know, are you are we east or west and all that stuff. So I, it's just trying to like, you know, the stuff we can control is having a great weight room today and, you know, building on that. I will say, Sammy, that I do think that what probably gets lost sometimes is, you know, there's some luck involved. Like, you know, you got to like, you know, stay injury free or relatively injury free. Um, you know, that, that's a big thing. Sometimes you get some bad luck with that. And, um, you know, sometimes just some breaks go your way, you know, and you're hitting your stride, you know, that's the whole thing. If you can hit your stride going in November, you know, then you got a chance. And that's, that's really kind of our focus. How are the numbers over there at Groves? I mean, like, obviously how are the numbers, you know what I mean? Like, you know, team wise, you know, program wide, we're about 95, you know, like I said, we had a good, strong freshman class coming in a strong senior class and junior class. So, you know, about 95 total and, you know, our varsity team, you know, will hold about 45 of those. Not bad. I mean, any change in uniforms at all? Or are you guys keeping the same ones? We're, we're always, you know, we always, we, we, we try to be like Oregon and get some different stuff. So we're thinking about playing with some decals and some other stuff this year. So doing a couple of different things. Before I let you go, coach, um, you know, I like to, um, you know what I mean? Before I let you go, Coach, um, you know, we already talked expectations. I mean, like, um, 
it's going to be interesting to see how the season goes. And I'm looking forward to seeing you at Media Day um, coming up right. on the ninth. Thanks, brother. Again, I, I appreciate everything you do for high school sports, in particular football in the OAA. You're the man. If you need anything, I'm your guy. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'm Birmingham Groves coach Jim Dewall here on the podcast. Thank you for calling in this week. Thank you. Yep. God bless. And see you at Media Day. Okay, um, when we come back, we're going to talk to Seahome coach Jim Dewald here on OA Now. Welcome back to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Termina here. We got the coach of the Maples of Birmingham Seahome, Coach Jim Dewald. Coach, thank you for calling in this week here on the podcast. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Sam. Appreciate it. Um, When you look at Seahome last year, a lot of success. I mean, like, you look at, of course, um, getting by your arch rival twice and then you know, winning the blue division, um, recap last season for me in your eyes. Yeah, I think, uh, it was a, we had a, a really senior heavy team that, uh, that they, they've been together really since a lot of them played as sophomores, a couple played as freshmen. So, you know, they were young a few years ago and they had time to develop and, and then, um, they had a really good senior year. Um, disappointed how we went out in the district, uh, championship game, but, uh, I thought it was a really, really good team that, uh, had a great year. And when you look at you guys, when you look at last season, of course, beating Groves twice, um, that had to be one of the um, biggest impacts for your kids, obviously, in your community, um, just knocking off your arch rival. Um, talk about both those meetings with Groves and then also the playoff matchup with Groves. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is what it is and in, in the way the, the playoffs are set up, right? You're, you, you know, we're always going to try to play Groves the last week. You know, we'd always want them week nine. We got them getting week nine this year. Um, and if you're if you're good and they're good, you're going to meet in the playoffs the second round or the first round for two weeks in a row. And it's happened a couple times, and it is what it is. I mean, the first game was a you know a good battle, twenty one. I think it was twenty one. We lost by a score, twenty one fourteen. And then the, the second game was like a Big Twelve shootout. <laughs> yeah, fifty six forty nine. That was like I've always I always love Big Twelve shootouts. You know, when I get used to watching those. I mean, like, you know, when you, but when you look at the new era of college football, you got the Big Ten now with 18 teams, the uh, Big 12, I think, with 16 teams. I mean, like, yeah. you know, so, you know, that game in the playoffs last year with Groves was just, I'm going like, this is like Kansas, this is like a typical Big 12 shootout with two rivals <laughs> playing each other. We're like, what is this? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, it's amazing when you get a shootout like that. Well, all we do is run the ball. Mm hmm. It's it's odd because you guys run the ball. You guys run the ball very well with the Veer offense. I mean, like, but to see a team like you guys put fifty six points on your arch rival, that's insane. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, that's a good game, great environment. It was it was super fun to be a part of. And when you look at this year's team, I mean, obviously, you know, taking, I mean, like, going to be a very young team this year. Um, talk about let's go with your offense first. I mean, obviously, um, you're going to have to replace your quarterback. Um, mm -hmm. Talk about your um. Talk about impact players on the offensive side of the football that OA Nation needs to know about. Well, we've had a good kid named Ken Roberts that uh, is a really good athlete, great kid. Um, you know, he's he's uh, he's a really good athlete. He'll be a B-back for us. Um, we had him play a little tight end because, you know, we had the Kenny boys back, to, you know, uh, Kenny at fullback and, and, uh, and quarterback, and you had Sean Emerson at B-back. So, you know, he kind of, you know, he was about third string a bit last year. So we put him at tight end, but he's going to be our D-back. He's going to be a really good player for us. Um, Alex Smith is going to be another senior that's going to share time with him there. Our quarterback position, that's the, that's going to, we won't, we won't know that to the first week. We really don't. Um, I think we, you know, we have uh, two kids, um, Hughes and, and, uh, and uh, Roll, Finn Rowland um, competing for that that spot um one's senior one's a junior um who knows what's gonna happen they're, they're both competitive they're both having a great summer look forward to uh seeing how that uh, plays out and when you look at of course the um, wide receiving group i mean obviously you know that is very interesting to see i mean any impact players at the wide receiver spot so we have nathan walsh there he's gonna be a senior big tall lengthy lengthy kid uh he's a pretty good athlete uh, he's also a safety force he played last year as a junior um, he's going to be a, a good, good player for us. Um, and then we have, you know, the A back position is our slot, is our slot, uh, you know, running backs, if you will. Um, Alejandro Roth, you know, Hondo is going to be a senior there. Is doing a great job. You have kids like uh, Kyle um, 
uh, Kyle Moore that's been fighting to get on those positions. So those are guys that, you know, play in space. They got to block in space. Um, you know, we look forward to seeing what those guys can do. Because like I said, we there's not – besides that we have, uh, you know, Matt Ernie and, and Magnus Brandstrom are the only really returning starters on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, Penn Roberts, like I said, started to tie in for us, uh, but he's going to be the B-back. So we got – we had a lot of holes to fill um, in the offensive line. We got we we've been pretty lucky the last few years, but good offensive line, and, and uh, we'll see how these guys uh, pan out. But right now they're playing well. They're working hard and uh, getting stronger, and I'm looking forward to it. Talk about your defensive side of the ball. Obviously, you know this is going to be where the area we're paying a lot of attention to. So talk about your all three areas: the defensive line, the linebacker, and the um, defensive secondary. Well, once again, you. Uh, uh, Alejandro Roth and, and, and Penn uh, Roberts are, are, are returning stars, if you will, uh, at backer. Um, they both kind of rotated last year on our weak side backer. We're going to move some people around there. We may move Penn back to safety. Um, defensive line, once again, you have the Matt Ernie kid that played last year for us, uh, two-way Magnus. Uh, Branstrom will be another kid there. Um, we have newcomer Sean McGlynn's doing a great job up front. Um, you know, we, we, we have a lot of positions to, to fill. Um, the cornerback position we have to fill. Uh, right now we, um, you know, we're, 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 we're fighting to see who's going to be those guys. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, right now I think Finn, between Finn and Jack, you know, at, at quarterback, we're gonna, you know, whatever one doesn't start will probably be the corner. Um, on one side of the ball or, or, or over on defense. Um, our safety, you know, we had Kyle Robbins and Sean Emerson last year at safety. Those are kind of the quarterbacks of the defense. We need to replace those guys, and they're, they're very hard to replace. I mean, Sean went on to play uh, is, is at Miami of Ohio playing football, and Kyle's playing Eastern Michigan baseball. So those are two really good athletes that we have to replace. And like I said, they're the quarterback of the team back there on defense. So we, we need to uh, get, the, get the two new safeties this year. And then let's talk about the, the division you're in. Of course, this is the blue division. You guys are in a 17 division. I mean, so you get to play six um six league games. Um, yeah, talk about we're gonna, we're gonna break we're gonna break each team down here, and then we'll talk your non conference. Um, obviously, um, we're gonna talk robes as well here as well. So, you know, so talk about your your thoughts, feelings about playing these teams in the non conference. We're gonna start off with um. Farmington. We're gonna start out with them. Well, Farmington, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that they're they're back in the blue. Um, they got pushed to white, and uh, they don't belong up there. They don't belong in the white, and uh, they came down to the blue. And you know, they're well coached. And uh, you know, last time they were in the blue, they they, uh, you know, they beat us for uh, you know, in in the league, and and uh, so it's gonna be a good little competition. Um, North Farmington. North Farmington is uh Always, obviously, you know, really well coached. Um, you know, they were they were pretty young uh, last year, I believe. Um, we've we've had some good games with them last year. I think uh, things got out of hand a little bit early on them, but the uh, year before we came down right to the last second. So they're they're always well coached and well prepared, and look forward to playing them. Oak Park. Oak Park was extremely young last year. Um, off the top of my head, I, I God, I, I think they had like six sophomores and two freshmen playing last year on varsity. So they're going to be really, really good. And I know they were down last year, but they're, you know, Coach Carter does a great job. They'll get those guys ready. But they were really young. So I expect them to be pretty good this year. Troy Athens. Troy Athens. Uh, Troy Athens, you know, they went to the new offense with the double tight. Wing uh, T. Wing T. And I think, uh, I think it's a great offense. I, I know people, you know, you in, in – think every football was all throwing the ball, you know, shotgun stuff. I think they have a good system going on. I think they did a really good job last year and they're going to be, you know, a, a nuisance to deal with moving forward. Troy. Troy is, is one of those teams that, uh, you know, they do a really good job. Chris does a good job there. And they've been making, I think they've been playoffs with four years in a row. Um, you know, truthfully, I mean, I, I just don't think Troy, Troy Athens belongs in our league. They, they don't. So it's, it's frustrating to see them in the playoffs and, and, and the, but they should be in the higher league. But well, for the record, um, Troy did not, job. well, for the record, Troy did not make the playoffs last year. They lost on oh, the last second not? touchdown to Frazier. Okay. Final okay, play of that so, game. Yeah, my bad. My mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. But, um, 
But Troy, you know, they're going to be solid. I mean, you really look at them. I mean, they're going to be good, you know. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're always good. I mean, but once again, when you're the ninth biggest school in the state, probably shouldn't be playing the blue. Oh, I agree with you. I agree with you there. Um, talk about Bloomfield Hills. I mean, obviously, Seahome and Bloomfield Hills, they have a heck of a rivalry. Um, yeah. You know, talk about playing against Coach Loria and his team. I mean, like, you know, you know, because Seahome and Bloomfield Hills, they've had some tight battles, you know, in the past. Yeah. Yeah, we had a tight battle from last year. Um, you know, Dan Dan's a staple in the OA. I mean, he's been at, you know, obviously Bloomfield Hills and Losser, same same idea, but forever and ever. So, I mean, the, him to, to, to stand the test of time is, is awesome. It's a kudos to him and, and what he does for that school and what he does for those kids. I'm not sure what they have coming back to off the top of my head. I don't know how they good, but I, I think they were pretty good on the JV last year, so I think they'll be pretty good. Um, and it'll be very interesting to see. So let's talk your non-conference. Um, we're going to save growth for last. So talk about your non-conference. I mean, you're playing six league games, plus you have two non-league games, plus um, Grove. So talk about your um, two non-league games. So we have uh, Avondale first. I think we're week two or three with him off the top of my head. I, I think it's week two. Um you know, Coach Myers go over there now. They're 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 running a really good system. I thought they were very very good last year. Uh, we we you know we got them last year, um, but we turned the ball over a ton. But they're, you know, offensively they do a great job, and they um I think they're going to be um they're going to be tough to handle. And then and then of course we, you're um we have West West Bloomfield. Oh um, God, that's not going to yeah. be easy. Yeah, it is what it is. It just. You just kind of sometimes shake your head at the league and you just you 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 move on. You know what I mean? That's I, I don't get why the blue has so many teams when you have two massive schools in there that should be moved up, but whatever. We we cross over up to West Bloomfield. Um uh, we personally haven't played West Bloomfield since I've been at Sea Home. Um so you know, I don't I mean I know they're always loaded with talent and, and uh, so I don't I don't know I don't see them much on film I don't know much about them obviously than what I hear I'm not a social media guy so I don't I couldn't tell you if they have one D1 guy or 13 I have no idea um, but well you know we'll take them on just like we do everyone else we'll 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 work that week to to uh, do the best we can to stop them and we'll try to hold keep the ball away from them and then talk about Groves. I mean, like I had Coach Flaherty on earlier here on the podcast, um, talking about that rivalry. I mean, the, talk about the rivalry between Groves and your eyes. I mean, oh, we talked a lot about it last year, but you know, just give like a little refresher to everybody. Yeah, it's a, it's about as uh, heated rival as you can get. Um, I think you have two really, really good teams in the same city. Um, that I think the both do things well at, at what they do. Um, you know, they do what they do and we do what we do. And we believe in our systems. Um, we believe in um, fighting for the community and, and, and playing for the community and playing for the schools. And um, it's a heated, heated rival. And, you know, and last year we were, we got the best of it uh, for two games in a row, but you know, it's obviously we've been on the other side of the coin a lot as well. Um, they'll be pretty good. I mean, they, they lose the quarterback, but they got, you know the the receiver, the little the, uh, the last name little kid. Yep. Uh, not, not a little kid, but his last name is little. Yeah, his last name's little. So, yes, I know. Yeah. Um. And obviously they Chris got the, the gat the gatch kid. Yep. Is, Avery Gat. You know. Yeah. He's the real deal. Um. Shit. We shoot. Sorry, let me say that. Uh, oh. We. I remember him as a sophomore. I mean, he was the real deal as a sophomore, and uh, he's only getting better. So. You know that's that's uh, something we have to deal with going down the line. They have a you know they they do a good job offensively and defensively and. You know, it's it's a it's, it's a solid program, and I, I I love it. I love the rivalry. I love the 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 the, the heatedness of it. I love playing at the end of the year. Um, nothing nothing's better. I mean, nothing speaks more about high school football than that game. And I'm sure there's a lot of other rivals, and you know, like Clarkston Lake Orion type of thing. And and there's other rivals that that uh, are just as heated. But uh, I think it makes high school football, and I love it. Talk about the new facility over there. Um, obviously, the um, it, you just got that facility last year. So talk about how much impact that new facility has been for you guys. It's awesome. I mean, it is awesome. I, I, I just, you look around and, and, and we're so lucky at our school that we don't have a track around the football field. So it's already a cool stadium. 
And then so you have, it basically looks like it's enclosed. I mean, the one side's a hill with a big scoreboard. The other side is a three-story montrose, or it is, you know, whatever that word is, big old building with that has our locker room, the coach's office, you know, you know, batting cages, the track, the basketball, the golf simulator, the film room. I mean, everything you need, the concessions are in there, the team room. It is, uh, it is phenomenal. And it is so cool to be part. I just can't, I just, you sit in that thing on the, on the field and you look at that big building you know, like, this is like a small college. And uh, Aaron Frank, our AD, is, that's has been his baby. He did a great job designing it. And I, I, I think it's awesome. I have not been in that new facility yet. So oh, I Sammy, can... you got to come, and I'll take you for a tour. I'll Ooh. take you for a personal tour. It's, it's, it is so cool. I think, you know, Aaron Frank's done a really good job. I think, uh, you know, our game day experience, you know, the, the Friday nights, you know, he, he – He's done a great job of, of of getting music going during timeouts and different things like that. It's such a cool environment. I can't tell you how many people go to those games and go. Even when we have players come back, like, oh, this is this is crazy. How come it's not like this when we're there? I mean, it is. It's fun. It's a it's a it's a big party, and it's uh it's awesome to be a part of. And, and God, we are we are lucky at see home. I remember that playoff game really well. You know, that Seahawks playoff game against Groves when you guys had the lights going and, like, you know, you guys coming out to, um, you guys coming out, you know what I mean? Like, you guys even made some design changes a little bit that helmet. You um, Americanized the um, S logo on your um, helmet, you know, so that was weird. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did that uh, uh, later on in the year, and it was cool. We are... <laughs> It's a cool place to be a part of, Sammy. I'm not gonna lie. I, I enjoy it every day, and you know, we worked out this morning, and uh, kids got after it this morning, and we are we are we are excited for this season to get going. How is program strength going over there? I mean, like obviously, you look at you lose a lot of you lose that senior class. That was a heck of a senior class. So, yeah. how is program strength going over there? Well, I, I, our numbers are up. Uh, our numbers are great. You know, we still have to battle losing kids out of our middle school, which is, you know, drives me bananas. But, uh, uh, you know, our numbers are good. I mean, I think right now we're at 90 kids in the whole program. Which wow, that's a lot. The highest it's been in, in probably, God, 10 years, I was, I'd imagine. But, uh, yeah, program numbers are good. Kids are great. Uh, kids work their, their tail off. And I just, I couldn't be more proud of them. And when you look at, when you look at the, um, you know the JV levels. You look at the um. You look at the middle school levels and talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um. You know we're, we've been able to field three teams for the last couple of years, and for a while we were only fielding two teams, and and it's it's massive when you can field three teams. You have three starting quarterbacks. You have you know three starting B backs. You have six starting offensive guards. You know, so you get more kids playing time. Um. So we uh, uh it's very it, it helps us a ton. You know, you can't get better sitting on the bench. You've got to play. Um, I think our lower level coaches do a really, really good job of, of preparing those guys and making sure kids get on the field so they stay in the program and they they get to us as a varsity and we can you know take advantage of some of that playing time and, and, and change it into you know a varsity player. Um, you know, I, I, I love the way we do things. I wish the whole OAA would will go to the Saturday morning J V games. That way you have a full roster available on Friday night, still baffling that we have to fight these teams to play the JV games on Saturday. It just, it makes sense. I mean, shoot, I know for a fact there's a big school in the red that, that they're going to have a sophomore quarterback. That's going to be the backup quarterback on varsity. Well, now he can't play JV, but you play on Saturday mornings. He's, he's available on the varsity game on Friday night as a backup. He plays Saturday, but when you play him on Thursday night or Thursday, he can't be the backup or he has to not play it. He's missing a full year of, of football. So I just, you know, I'm, you asked me about the lower levels, and I, I believe in this soul. I've been fighting for this for years and years and years. It just makes sense to play these games on Saturdays. It, it's very interesting, you know what I mean? I mean, like, I know Celine does this. I know they, at times they do, they make, um, they do they have JV play on Saturday. Um it's very it, it's very interesting if I mean like if see teams do that I mean it, it's a very it's a very interesting concept you know what I mean like for teams to play on a Saturday you know what I mean so, I don't see how anyone I, I can't get someone to tell me why it doesn't make sense it makes a hundred percent when you have a full roster on, that's what you want because the lower levels you're trying to just get kids experience and yeah you want to win games down there but you you're trying to get experience but if I have a kid that's going to be 
a sophomore that can be a legit backup on varsity, why would I not want him a backup on varsity on Friday night, but still not lose a full year of playing? Because he, if he's so, if he, if he's a true backup on varsity, and you don't allow him to play JV, he's not getting any better. But if he's a backup on varsity on Friday night, Saturday morning he plays a game, he gets experience. It's just, it's mind blowing that we have teams that won't do it, and it's mind blowing that we get, well, we can't get coaches on Saturday. Every single sport, girls swimming, girls basketball. You name it, volleyball, soccer, everyone plays on Saturday. But the toughest, most mentally strong teams, they go, oh, we can't get kids here on Saturday. Come on, man. And We're I'm... supposed to be the, the cream of the crop. Not, You know, it's embarrassing that a girls softball team can get there on Saturday, but a, 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 football, a bunch of boys playing football can't be there on Saturday. It's embarrassment. I mean, like, I, I know I get you. I get you there. Um, let's talk about your uniform. Um, obviously, um, any change to the uniform this season? Um, no, we actually got the new aways, but I mean, you wouldn't even notice the difference. I think the stripe is a little bit different on the shoulder. It's like a thicker stripe, but other than that, they're the exact same. The exact same. Um, yeah, helmets are maroon. The I love the maroon. Thing. I loved it when you guys went to the maroon helmet. I mean, uh, like, I know, Sammy, you you hated the white, and I liked the white for a second, but then the white got so dirty on those helmets. I was like, let's go back to the maroon. Maroon is a good color for you guys. I like maroon. I like it. I like, I like maroon. It. It's a great color. I for try you. to do something different just to try to. You know that was at the that was that was years ago when everyone was trying to change uniforms. I thought I'd be you know not the old dude. I'm like all right, let's change it up. But you know I'm glad we're back to the maroon. I'm really glad too. Um, before I let you go, Coach, um, what is your expectations this year heading into the season for Seaholm? Well, I I, I I like to believe we got a, you know we got a pretty good schedule. I like to say that uh, we can get we can squeak in with, you know, maybe five or six wins um, into the playoffs and see where we go from there. Um, I just, I think the, the style of offense we play keeps us in many games and, you know, you never know how the ball will bounce. So, you know, are we going to be as good as we were last year? No, I mean, I, that, that'd be lying to myself and everyone if we, we were going to be that good. But um, I think we have a bunch of kids that are working hard. I think that we'll try to play keep away with the ball like we always do and uh, see where the game leads us in the fourth quarter. You know, if we're in the fourth quarter, up a score, down a score, tied, I like our chances. And especially when you play that offense, severe offense. I mean, like, um, one of the most um, unique offenses in the game. I, I mean, like, the Veer offense, you know, the, the teams I think about running that offense is you guys and also Adams. So, mm -hmm. you know, so basically, you know, so how did that idea come of bringing the Veer offense into um, Seahome? Well, it started when I was at and Andover. Um, you just uh, <laughs> when you don't have D one guys, you know, falling falling out of the sky. You just uh, you gotta you gotta do what you can do. And uh, our our, our community uh, is behind it. Our, you know, everyone understands why we do it, and uh, they believe in it. And our kids believe in it. Our fans believe in it. Our school believes in it. Um, so. It is what it is. I mean, I think I think we've had in 13 years we've had two kids sign letters of intent for Division One football. You know, so we're not. And you got to go against the, you know, some of these other schools. They'll have, you know, a kid every year, or they'll have two kids on as a D1 player. Like we just don't we don't get it. I mean, we uh, we got what we got, and uh, whoever comes through those doors, we don't recruit. We don't. Uh, there's no undue influence. We just. Whoever comes to those doors, we'll coach them up and, uh, you know, make them mentally and physically stronger and and move on. And I think also having that facility is going to help big time. I mean, you look at, you know, with these kids, you know what I mean? Having that facility over there, too, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't know why you'd want to send your kids somewhere else when you can go to free to see home. Uh, you live in the community. You live in the city. You pay the taxes. Why don't you just come over here and, and you know, and. Uh, heck, a couple months ago, I had a, there was a Brother Rice kid on our baseball field. I threw him off. Like, hey, hey, go to your own facility. This is our facility. If you want to come here, come here. It just, we, uh, I think we do things right. I'm excited for the future. I'm excited for the facilities. I'm excited for the season. I'm excited for the CR. Watch our seniors, watch them, watch their leadership skills develop, watch their football develop, and then see what happens. Thank you, Birmingham Coach Jim Dewall here. Birmingham Sea Home Coach Jim Dewall here. Thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. I will see you at Media Day. Say, I will not be there, Sammy. I kind of, you know, that's a week we give off. I try to get away with my family, so I'll have another coach represent us there. But uh, 
Um, thank you very much. I always appreciate you, you allowing me on this. I appreciate you too, Coach. You well, take care and God bless. You. All right, thank you, Sammy. Bye bye. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OAA. I'm going to let, I'm going to let everybody off. I'm going to let everybody go here. Take care. God bless. And I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care. God bless.